<laughs> All right, Greg, let's go into our first topic here. Um, we're starting off with a bang. Uh, Dre and Chad are here for this purpose. Uh, Major League Baseball lockout is over? As of 7 o'clock tonight, the MLB lockout is over. Now, okay, millions of questions. The first okay. one being, was there an actual expectation that it would be today? There was. They decided to start meeting again this week. Um, on Tuesday, they canceled another set of games, and but they were still continuing to discuss it, which is which was slightly encouraging because it wasn't like the last time where after they canceled games, they just went back home. Yeah. So at least they were continuing negotiating on this part. I wasn't expecting it to be today. I was expecting it to be maybe next week even. Okay. But I'm at least glad something happened happened on in that sense. And I love that it happened on the same day that Jeff Passan got hacked, by the way, which is okay, incredible. Okay, did he get hacked? Because I saw a lot yes, of Jeff Passan going on. What happened? He got hacked. What they apparently, do? I, I don't know, but apparently he, um, someone hacked him and like it was like someone that was trying to sell NFTs or something like that. Oh, uh, okay. So, he got hacked. Then, like, he comes back on Twitter, announces that the union agreed to the CBA, and then tweets a response saying, I also have some really cool NFTs if anyone's interested in purchasing, which is amazing. I saw that tweet, and that's when I was like, is he – like, because at first I was just like, that's a really, like, relevant and funny thing. When, when a tweet goes viral, people put their other stuff below it. Like, we had a tweet – my tweet from two Super Bowls ago with the blinding light stuff – and then my tweet with Corey in the house, I put thoughts on the bench underneath it. I'm like, yo, you oh, thought this God. was funny. Like, click this link, see some stuff. Those, yeah, those both blew up. Yep. And uh, I assumed he was just being really, really self-aware and funny there. But the fact that they were trying to sell it, that's super funny. Mm -hmm. And I, oh, I'm glad to him for appreciating it, too, and just being like, I like yeah, Jeff Pass. Oh, he's, he's great. He does everything so concise and simple that anyone can understand it which is all you can ask for from an insider in all seriousness so next question what is uh the or i guess who who's the winning side out of this what do we know the deal do we know what was given up i know that they said uh nine inning double headers and no more man yes. on second which what does man on second mean man on second was the thing they started last year where at the beginning of the extra innings they were going to put gotcha. a man on second base to encourage scoring essentially because it was like yeah, sorry, not in, not the tenth inning, eleventh inning. That's what it was. Gotcha. So like they would they they would try to because that was the thing. Like extra innings and stuff, they noticed that was like a thing where they were going to where there were some games that just were going on forever and stuff. So this was like an idea. Try to get that. Which for the record, something that I do love though is really cool. The they are setting up essentially a competition committee now. Okay. For going to the season. So like one of the things that I love about the NFL is that they have like a they have a group of coaches and player execs and owners that come together and they try to come up with like uh, different rule changes for the NFL every single year. And that's voted on. It's, you know, Mike Tomlin's a part of it every single year. Hmm. Baseball is going to do something kind of similar. They're going to have player reps. They're going to have management reps yeah. and they're going to try to come up with different ideas to be able to make the game better, which is something that I think is long overdue. And I'm glad that they're at least going to start doing this in 2023. Um, funny that you asked that. I think, I think short term, the players definitely won because in, in the sense they're getting more money and the minimum salary playing. was raised yeah <laughs> that's like the, the real win is that they've they're playing right right they're playing they're getting a full full season pay uh minimum salary was raised 570 to 700 what was it it is a uh a super ipa so i was trying to look for a hazy they had the home style which is my favorite but it was a double wasn't doing that um mm. it's super super traditional ipa really piney but really good so mm. sorry keep going okay no, it's okay. So, uh, so yeah, minimum salary is raised five hundred seventy thousand to seven hundred thousand, and it's incrementally going up for the next five years. So, like this CBA is only, the, this collective bargaining agreement is only applicable for five years, and mm -hmm. then like after that, we're basically right back where we started. So that's that's how it's going to be. Um, the collective, the the um, what was it? The the, uh, the luxury tax that is set at two hundred and thirty million this year, and they are putting three different levels of penalties if you exceed it by that much. And then each year it's going to go up. And I believe the max that they're going to have it at is $244 million, which will be in the fifth year. Huh. And they're also setting up the um, the pre-arbitration bonus pool, which is something that I, was yes. a really cool idea that I like. It, it's going to be set at $50 million. Okay, so I 50 was that, the number. Because that was the one 50, that the players which, wanted a buck 90 or something, or a buck 20. That was the one they wanted. They wanted $105 million and 105. the owners wanted five. <laughs> which was 50 like, is 
a really, really good agreement. 50 is a great agreement. There's going to be a lot of players that are going to be eligible for that, and I'm good. excited to see how that goes. There's a lot of other smaller kind of rule changes that I think are yeah. going to be very noticeable over time. Uh, the NL is going to implement the DH. Uh, starting next year, they're going to balance the schedule out now where instead of like – so like, in, so like originally like a baseball schedule is set up where you're, you're playing your division like ridiculous number of times. Yeah. You're getting a home and away series against other guys in the league. And then you get, um, and then you're playing one interleague division for that year. They're going to balance the schedule out now. So everyone is going to play everyone each year. Okay. I like that. I think, is awesome. I, I think that's perfect. Cause I get really frustrated in a sport that has over 100 games and right. what 60 teams less. 30 teams, 30 teams. Is it only 30? Holy crap. I always thought it was 30, 30 and 30. Yeah. Oh, man, mm-hmm. that's sport. 30 teams. Wow, I'm out of that. Okay, so 100, mm-hmm. 100 plus games, 30 teams. I feel like they should play every team once. Right, so like you're going to get like – I appreciate that I because now you're at least going to get the opportunity to see you see your teams play like other – you know, well, and, other and like it's going to see... bring your city a lot of revenue when big right. hitters like Tatis come in town. Yeah, you'll see – yeah, for like us, for in, like the Pirates, for instance, like I'll be able to see Trout every year. I'll yes. be able to see the Yankees every year. I'll be able to see the Red Sox every year, which I think is awesome. Yes. Um, That's part of it. There's there's so many other things too, and I pulled up like – Yeah. I tried to pull up like everything that I possibly can. Shut up, is, Dad. Like, just, I am a big baseball guy. It's absurd. So like they expanded the postseason to 12 teams, which I like. What was gonna give it two, at? Seven. It was 10. See that originally. big baseball guy. Um, okay, so now it's six apiece. Yep, six apiece, which I like because it gives more teams opportunities for that. Uh, the one big holdup, and and also they instituted a draft lottery, so now the six worst teams are going to be essentially in a pool to try to get the number one pick every single year. So at least that's more revenue. By the way, they also agreed to ads on jerseys and helmets. I'm a very big fan of that. Greg says that's – or uh, Dre. Sorry. Dre says that's massive and they're playing every team. Marketing the league was always a huge issue, so that solves that one big time. Right. I think that so does jersey and helmet sales in a way. Yeah, it does. Um, so those are some of like the – so those are kind of like the more bigger ticket items, I'd say, because those are the core economic ones. But here's the thing. Right now, I say the players because flat out they're making more money. They're they're making more money. They made it, They agreed to it to set it up so that they're – going to essentially make more money and all that long term though i think it's the owners and Mm -hmm. the reason i say that is because the way that this agreement was structured in all seriousness there wasn't necessarily any radical change to promote parity in baseball you know like so i actually went back and i looked this up one day because i was curious the the 0405 nhl lockout that essentially created the salary cap one of the reasons that they demanded the salary cap was because the revenue split between players and owners was so drastic that there were multiple franchises that were bankrupt because the salary structure was way off. The players were making almost 80% of the league revenue. Jeez. Yeah. Which way too much. So they had to set it up straight and that's why they did the salary cap. Baseball still has no salary cap. There's no minimum salary. For a team has to spend. You have a minimum salary that a player makes. Yeah, I was going to say there's a minimum. Thousand, for, we looked at that up last goes week. Up. Right? right, and then instead it goes up. But there's no so much minimum salary. There's no minimum salary floor set up right there. So you're not actually creating any sense of you know adding more parity. You're not forcing no. teams to spend more money and all that. So it's essentially the exact same revenue, same system that we had set up previously. But the only difference is that players are going to make more of it. Hmm. that's about it. And and here's yep. the other thing also that drives me nuts too, is that hmm. this, the collective like tax threshold that's continuously going up, which is like the luxury tax in all seriousness, where it's already set for the amount of money that they're going to spend those five years and stuff. There's no calculation for the revenue that can come from that. So like kind of the idea, like with a salary cap, the rate that it's set up is like, it comes from the related revenue that a sport generates. So like, for instance, like with basketball, there's basketball related revenue that comes in and it's split between the owners and the players and that pool for the players, that's how they determine the salary cap because it's divided by 30 teams. Well, Hmm. if there's going to be this push to try to make more money with baseball, more revenue and stuff like that, players aren't going to necessarily see that because there's already the tax threshold set up. So realistically, yeah. like 
if they make a, they make a lot of more money in the next couple of years and stuff like that, it might not trickle down to the players in all seriousness. What percent of uh, players do you feel like, if any, during arbitration? Like, was there a percent of players that were against it, or was it basically every player behind it? So here's so here's the fascinating thing that and I and I thought this was juicy when I heard yeah. about this. So today. So today, the way that the vote was broken down for this agreement, so MLB submitted the proposal to the union. The union is divided up between, so you have a leadership group, which are the elected guys, and then every single player rep, player has, every single team has a rep. So there's 38 team reps. I do not know, actually. It was Jacob Stalin before he got traded, so I'm not sure who it is now. But, um, But every team has a rep. And then above that, is like an eight group leadership committee of players that are voted on. Like some of those guys include like, I think Max Scherzer's on there. Yeah. Cause he's been going to the, he's been the big yeah, yeah, in so, the meetings. Yeah. Yeah. So he's like on there too. So when this, so when this proposal got sent, yeah, the entire leadership committee voted against it. Eight, nothing. Okay. The entire leadership committee voted against it. It then went to the Damn. team reps and it was 26 to four in favor of it. Wow. So 26 to 12, which was over two thirds majority voted for it to go into effect. And that's how they agreed to it. wait. So the, the like core group of guys like Scherzer and all them didn't agree to it. No, it was the, wow. it was the reps for every single other team that did. I love that though, because it, 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 I get it like Scherzer and them, but is there a realistic expectation that the eight guys there are pretty wealthy? Yes. hundred percent. I'm not saying that they're like, letting anyone suffer but it's easy for them to hold out and fight a little harder and think they're doing the right thing for the little guy which they are Mm -hmm. but man it's kind of one of those things where like when the nba almost had a lockout people were like well are you guys gonna pull together and get a fund like are the Mm -hmm. are you gonna you know support the guy that's a fringe player like are you Mm -hmm. gonna pay his taxes because guess what he just wants to play baseball they're doing something for the future of the sport but when you're mm-hmm. living and not in a negative way, but when you're living paycheck to paycheck in baseball, you can't do yeah. that. You can't fight Here's for the integrity, the... and that's crazy. I'm gonna add some more juiciness. Oh, to you, okay? I love this so, so much. This, one is, the, of the this reasons, is the best so... baseball story you've ever told me. You're welcome. So one of the reasons <laughs> that they waited so long to yeah. agree to it, and one of the reasons why the leadership committee was so against it, was because for the um, for the luxury tax threshold, the owners decided to add like another penalty layer. Okay. For it. And like, so like, you know how, like you go over by a certain percentage, you get taxed. If you go over by another percentage, you like lose stuff basically. So they added a third, they added a third penalty layer to it. And the third one was 270 million for this year. Right. So they're, they're starting the year at 230 million as like the luxury tax threshold. And And you'd get hit 230 and 270, not 230 and then 40 to push to 270. You can, if you hit, you can go above the luxury tax at 230, but if you do go by a certain percentage, you get, you get taxed, you get penalized for it and stuff like Uh, that. Yes. Okay. The last, the last level was 270. Okay. There's only one team in baseball that is over 270 in salary right now. The Yankees. Close. The Dodgers. No. The Red Sox. No. The Mets. Yes. Oh, you meant like close, close. I thought you meant close yes, in terms yes, of the pride yes. of the team. And here's, and here's the, cra- the... And here's the crazy. Well, here's the thing too. So they're they have a two hundred seventy one million dollar salary. Yeah. Like pool right now for their guys. Two of the guys on the leadership committee are Mets. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's what. Yeah. Why? Okay. Well, two is weird. Um, yeah. One of them being Scherzer. <laughs> Oh, I forgot Scherzer sure was a Met. That makes a lot of sense. Yes. Yes. Wow. I know. Man, this is this there. I mean, yeah. You're right. It's like juicy. I feel like I'm in high school. Again. I know. This yeah, it's it's funny. It's funny because like I was like on Twitter seeing some stuff about how like people in the industry were jokingly calling it the Steve Cohen tax because that's like because that's the owner of the Mets. So. And he's the only he's the only owner that I know of that has been extremely vocal about spending as much as he can to put a winner on. So, do you believe there are it. a winner though? 
No. Yeah, <laughs> but we'll neither. see. The um, season is young. Yeah, well, it's very young. So uh, I saw that the players are expected to report to spring training ASAP. Um, yes. What damage? Sunday is the deadline. Yeah. What damage did this do? to the upcoming season was it only really like two weeks of games are they gonna have to alter anything really not too much so there are gonna play 162 games um they missed the start of the season by about a week i'd say because opening day was march 31st opening day is tentative opening day right now is scheduled for april 7th so they okay. really only missed like a week of games uh they're gonna make up some on either I don't know if they're going to do um, a couple double headers or if they're going to do like a full week on the back end of it to make up for it. But aside from that, like it'll hardly be noticeable in all seriousness. So cool. not necessarily anything like damaging, like it should relatively start basically on time. So uh, the only thing, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. the thing that's interesting is that they're only going to get about three weeks of spring training. So that's like a very like tight window yep. to get everything in order. I mean, like granted, I would hope, players were at least like working out in some sort of way to get themselves ready. You agree. Would hope, but, but three weeks to like, but get ready I mean, for, that's like, where a lot of baseball. injuries come from, dude. Like the, yeah, a lot like, of injuries in the NFL too mm -hmm. came because players didn't get their full training camp. So, right. So I think it's going to be like the first maybe month of baseball is going to be really rough to start. Cause I think there's going to be guys that are going to try to like get themselves ready to go from the get-go and they'll, they'll probably injure themselves there's going to be some guys that maybe start slow and then we'll get yeah. up eventually but i think the first month of baseball is going to be a little rough but eventually like yeah. it'll it'll get back to normal there is a part of me greg that i have to admit selfishly i mm. was hoping for a bit of a lockout and there's it's two reasons okay you you, you mean canceled season right or uh, yes i was hoping for not a fully canceled season but a couple weeks here's okay why. one I was super excited for the Nashville Sound to be the biggest baseball team <laughs> in America at a certain point of time. You know what I mean? Like, selfishly, yeah. that game would have been crazy because there's no baseball. And that would have, right. you know what I mean, sold out in a second. Uh, the other reason is this is something that I heard. Uh, I forget who it was on. I, I don't think it was passing on uh, ESPN. Somebody was calling for it. But they were calling for um, MLB to or not MLB I guess the stars to do a uh, like a farm series where they just go play pickup games in random cities because I guess That'd that's what they did in the like lockouts in the early days like I don't know I think it was like Ruth had done it and a couple guys when there was a lockout they would travel to cities and just play farm field games and it was or that's incredible games. yeah I never knew that. That's awesome. I would have loved that. Absolutely. That's why like, I mean, I'm like, I'm glad baseball's here. But those those two reasons, I was kind of like, ah, like half a canceled season would be cool. Part of me was kind of hoping for a canceled season too, just for the fact that I think the ratings for the Korean and Japanese baseball oh, have gone, gone through the roof. Way up. Especially, you... be, ahead, especially because I was really hoping that some of the players would have actually gone over to play there for a year because technically they yes. wanted to get work. Did you happen to hear the theory that Rob Manfred wants baseball to go away for a few seasons? Oh, yeah. I've heard that, yeah. Okay, explain it be... to me because I heard it in, like, passing. Is it just to make the demand bigger? What what You know what I mean? Like, uh, he seems like he wants it to happen. I'm just trying to think of why. I think it's – I think part of it is also because of the fact that I think Manfred does recognize the fact that baseball is kind of broken. Okay. Like, uh, yeah, I don't there, think there's... he's a jag-off. I just think he's a POS. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, you got you got to remember that like the commissioner role is technically he's working for the owners. In same every as Goodell. League. So same as Goodell. Same as yep. like Adam Silver. Same as Batman. Same yeah, as well, Silver. Yeah, like he Silver works, does it better. Silver's but. Silver's a G. We get that. But but yeah. And here's the thing too. Like you forget like Manfred works for the owners and the owners in baseball are probably like some of the. I don't even know how to describe them, but they're like the most like. They're the le probably the least progressive ownership group in all of major sports, I would say. Huh. So, I think so. I, I think Manfred kind of secretly would have wanted it just because maybe there would have been like an idea that. And personally, I wouldn't have been surprised by this either. I think a canceled season maybe would have been the best thing for baseball in the long run, just for yeah. the fact that we would have had real change to come from it. Agreed. Yeah, but I mean, but here's the thing. I, I think that's why I bring. That's why I said short-term players win because they're making more money. But long run, I mean, it's still status quo. It's just you're you're basically just putting higher numbers on it, and that's really about it. Hmm. Um, who's gonna win the World Series this year? 
Wow. Um, well, baseball's back. We have to talk about it. We do. Shit. Uh, <laughs> I will say, so like, I need to look up, I got to remember because it's been like, I haven't looked at the free agency pools. And I know who's, I know who's going to win it. So you don't even, which need first look. off, which first off at like seven o'clock to like ownership, free agency officially opened again. So like, and there's, and there's over 200 MLB free agents still out there, including guys like Carlos Correa and Trevor story. And like Trevor story, these other like Trevor stories, free agent. Yeah. So huh. like, there's a lot of guys. And like right before, right before the lockout was implemented, there was like a rush to sign a bunch of guys too. Like the Rangers started shelling out ridiculous money. I know they gave Corey Seager like $200 million. So wow. there's, yeah. So like, I, I mean, they're going to try to make a play. I'm, gonna... I'm curious to see where, Cor- Go I'm fascinated to see where Correa goes, but I, just for consistency basis, I still got to say the Dodgers. I think the Dodgers will go. I think and that's I love, a great pick. And I want, and I think for the American league, I think the Rays will get in. I think they'll oh, get it. I like that. I like their rotation. I like their lineup. I like I Wonderkin. They are... No, he's a Marlin. I like Wonderkin as well. Yeah. Oh, no, he's there. He's Tampa, yeah. right? Wonder Franco. Yeah. Wonder Franco, yeah. Um Greg, I, I know who's gonna win. Who's gonna win? So last year the Atlanta Braves won, right? Yes. A team that used to be kind of cool and kind of were bad for a little bit. And oh, Ronald Acuna's back too, which is going to be awesome. He's back. I'm not picking them though, but I'm just okay. telling I'm telling the story. They he used to be the shit, right? Like Chipper mm-hmm. Jones back in the day. The Braves yes. were cool. You know, Andrew Jones and all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm going to go with the team that used to be cool and is no longer cool. And I'm just, okay. I'm just, I'm going to go with the Seattle Mariners. You know what? Um... The Mariners actually last season was probably their one of their better seasons they've had in a long time. Didn't they make the playoffs? They almost they, they almost, almost made okay. the playoffs. They missed they missed they missed on the last day. They have a very mm-hmm. young group of kids ready to come up. Their rotation. Do they have an good. old veteran like Freddie Freeman? Uh, That's what they need. I don't think so. Freddie Freeman's a free agent too, actually. So <laughs> Am I the greatest GM ever, or what? I mean, what are we I, doing here, Greg? You just you just have brilliant ideas without even knowing it. Who would have thunk it? Yeah, <laughs> the Mariners are the Mariners are actually a, a sexy pick, actually, to to make the World Series this year. So that that's pretty good, man. I would not I wouldn't be shocked at all. I'm a huge baseball guy, Greg. Huge, massive, ginormous, colossal, oh. everything. Uh, Greg, parting words. Uh, congratulations baseball's back um what would you like to say before we switch on to some other topics here which that is that's about 25 minutes of straight stick talk ball with greg or whatever stick ball talk i was gonna say that's that was a lot of stick ball talk. that was a lot we of stick ball but it was a good stick ball and it, stick i think ball. it was a deserved stick ball it was a happy stick ball because i've yes. been i've been sad i've been sad for you like haven't been yourself month. yeah I'll, I'll... no i've been a mess well i'm not drinking so that's another reason that true I'm not myself but... sober sad greg but all I will say is, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. What a time to be alive! That's what I'll say. <laughs> Love it. Let's jump yeah. on to the next.